We got a few people on the webinar side of this. Let's go, everybody. Welcome right. to episode nine of the Power of Leverage. And today we're going to be going deeper into building out a team, but really starting with your executive admin. And Pablo does this really well at a high level because, well, he runs Virtue Desk, number one, right? He created yeah. it. And he's got a few executive admins of his own. And then we're going to go into a chart that that we worked on together and it's uh, it's a pretty good chart but pablo welcome again thank you thank you for having me bro i appreciate it thanks for yeah. creating virtue desk and uh creating the the leverage community so let's get right into it pablo when we're hiring an executive admin can you tell me what the difference is between just hiring an admin or maybe your first va versus yeah. an executive one uh, sure. Well, the admin, just a regular general virtual assistant admin would be the person who would uh, be doing the tasks that you assign them to do, that you already have a good idea what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, you just need somebody like basically a muscle person to create that or to like create some sort of graphic or to, uh, you know, compile the database or go through the database, basically tedious tasks that need to be done and that's it. Okay. Executive assistant, uh, executive admin is more of a like a, a supervisory role for the person uh, because <clears throat> if you have several admins or ISAs, executive person can be the director of your operations. It could be the person responsible for um, not only just creating the tasks, but making sure other people are actually functioning and as intended. Okay. And basically that's, that's the core of your organizational structure. Uh, we, have, uh, we have several um, high level executive admins and we also have the director of operations. Uh, director of operations is a VA actually, uh, she's yeah. in the Philippines and she's uh, overseeing all that, uh, what's been going on. But um, it, it's not only that, it's basically keeping other people accountable. It's basically stepping in and to your shoes where you need to be basically doing, but mm -hmm. uh, the person who essentially is a shadow of you in an essence, that's what I was saying. Okay, got it. So let's talk about this executive admin that you hire. And then you said they can also be your director of ops, which both of you, both of us have. Yeah, as, uh, I you have, have a great, you have a great one. You have Manch who's, who's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, he's crushing it. Yeah. He does, he does a very good job. And he's crushing it, dude. Yeah. Very happy to be here. And then we also have the director of ops for lab code agents who people don't even know, but is a, is a virtual uh, a assistant. She's an executive admin, but she's been with me for eight years. So here we go. You know, it, it's developed into something absolutely amazing. So can we talk about the director of ops a little bit? What does that look like in your world? What would somebody with that title do for your business? Sure, well, um, in my business where we work with, uh, with customers who hire virtual assistants and we also have, uh, we have a lot of VAs. We have several hundreds of VAs who are you know, working for clients. Uh, director of ops would be, be, be the person responsible for managing the teams because uh, we have uh, several teams of VAs. Um, Director of Ops will also be responsible for overseeing the HR, overseeing the uh, the training department, and more of a like a conduit, be like a conduit between all those departments: the training department, HR, uh, placements, um, uh, first client Im Im impression. Uh, as you know what it means, yeah. But basically, the person who is um, the, not only the conduit but the responsible for that and uh, building. When, whenever you start to build a company, if you put your, when it's like building a house, you have to put first put, uh, you have to put the, the foundation. So the foundation and the frame of the house, that's your director of ops. Because around that person, you can build uh, the team. You can put the, like, if you build a house, you put the shit rock, you put the Got roof. It. This is all the components that need to go in. But what's holding it is a great director of ops, pretty much. Um, it's not 
the person who you would be having to make calls to leads or create marketing flyers. It's not. It's basically more of a managerial position. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Man. And so as we're building this out, let's say you, you hire an executive admin, they're working on everything that you would do, right? Because you're in essence kind of replacing yourself or duplicating yourself. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Then after you say, okay, great, you, you understand this, what would be that next hire? Because I want to get into the chart. But first, I want you to tell me, if I'm looking to grow, and let's be specific here, I know there are lots of sales verticals you cover, mm -hmm. but let's talk about real estate, right? Sure. If you're bringing in somebody as a director of ops for a real estate team, a real estate brokerage, what do you think that next vertical would be under the director of operations? Uh, under the director of operations, as if you bring in the virtual team, I think uh, what you need to have is the, um, the head of the ISAs. Another vertical would be the, the head of the marketing people who, who will be responsible for creating all your graphics. Uh, but again, it has to be a person overseeing that. Pe uh, people who, who are, you know, like, let's say, let's focus on the social media, social media admin. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, under this chart is, would be the, the head of social media, who is, okay. who has several people under her, people who are responsible for creating certain ads She's overseeing how they do it. She approves them. She gives them assignment. Uh, she gives them guidance as to how we want it to be done. She also uh, works on, uh, on um, building out the funnels. Okay. You know, that's that's the head of the marketing. So I'll, right. that will be the next, uh, you know. So you think, you think if, we're, if we're looking at this on the real estate side, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking at creating a kind of like a sales department with ISAs reaching out, receiving the leads, incoming leads, and that part, and then the marketing part as well. I, exactly. I Two agree separate. with you, man. Two separate, yeah, because marketing and sales are totally different things. Marketing is what brings you uh, the leads, and sales is what actually your agents who are converting them. Or no, the ISAs who schedule you. appointments, but it's, it's the job of the agent to actually convert it. So here's what we got here. And and Pavel and I kind of worked on this together. So he, he's looking at this section right here. So here mm -hmm. in the middle, you've got the director of operations. You can bring them in as an executive admin at first, train them, kind of start duplicating who you are, right? That's, that's yep. the middle part. That's what we're looking at. And then you would take one of these two, depending on where you're at first, whether it's a lead coordinator, was your sales manager, or a marketing manager, right? Yep, you go exactly. either way, depending on where you get most of your business, right? Like for us, Pavel, we get a lot of business from online leads, right? So, so that'll, be the, that'll be the marketing manager and lead coordinator, yeah. Exactly. The very first one I hired was Jake, Jacob uh, Fry, right? This was my There lead we go, manager. for a lead and then I hired a marketing manager. So it was like reverse because I was acting as the marketing manager myself. So now we go in here and this is where you can help us out, Pavel, because as we go in here, first of all, the lead coordinator is, is somebody who's going to make sure that they're quarterbacking the whole system, right? Now Correct. at the beginning, yep. they're going to be handling everything, incoming calls, outgoing Oh, they'll be calls, doing everything, yeah. Uh, every, everything. As you grow though, you have some options here. And Pavel, which, it, once the lead coordinator gets established, what would you say is the next person to hire? Uh, somebody- who obviously, does, like, the, obviously, yeah, I mean, get the ISA, get the ISA to do inbound, outbound. Uh, inbound would be to, um, you know, accept the leads that come in from the leads you, you, you generate or people uh, and outbound is you call out your database, call out your expires, your FISBOS. That's gonna be your, uh, you know, the ISA. Some people have several, um, you know, some, some we, have, I, 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 we have teams who have ISAs who are calling out expires only and FISBOS. Yeah. We have ISAs who are uh, calling out to the database, uh, the nurture database, the more of a warmer leads that are, yeah. Uh, you know, ready or almost ready, make them ready kind of a, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. And even, if, yeah. even if you don't have incoming leads, right? Like these no incoming and you don't have outgoing 
a call mm -hmm. because you're not calling expireds for sale by owners, just listed, just sold any of that. You could still go down this vertical, which Pavel was saying, right? That's important database. because the database, yeah. we've all, hopefully, we've that's all- gold, That's gold mine, dude, that's yeah. gold mine. Not that's a lot right. of agents understand that, but this is your gold mine in your cell phone. Yeah, and dude, look, this is all verticals. Yeah. This is not just real estate. It's all sales verticals. For any business, exactly. Yeah. So this is why I'd love to go deeper on hiring one ISA for your database, making sure that they're calling those that are active and making sure that your second person is calling those that are not active, kind of like they're dead, right? Yeah, and until then, they resurrect them or, or, or bury them. <laughs> yeah, and that's where, that's where your lead coordinator comes into play too, because they're going to be the ones creating the automated systems that help mm -hmm. bring back these old database leads. So Correct. automation yeah. through texts and email and all of that. And then in some cases, like with you, Pavel, you, you have a, a real estate company as well. You I do. do. We have recruiting a recruiting as well. And we do that. Yeah, we have a ISA calling out the recruiting uh, we have, uh, I mean, Lori, Lori Baldwin, uh, she's a designated broker of my, of my company and she's working very hand in hand with, uh, with Jay, who's doing recruiting calls for her. Uh, so sense. yeah. And I actually, he's also working, he's also working for Sunit. Oh, nice. Sunit yes. does a great job. Yes, he's doing company. recruiting for, for, for his company as well. He only sold, I think. 250 million in volume last year. Oh, that's it? That's it. Oh, come on. Dude, you need to step up, bro. <laughs> I'm I'm behind. Sunny, I'm Sunny, behind if you're listening, by, uh, if you're uh, listening to Sunny, you need to step up. <laughs> uh, he's beating me by 110,000, so. That's it, huh? So it's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's go to the second part of this on the lead coordinator. Because for us, we had this coming in. We eventually cut this off though, but we're looking to mm -hmm. bring this back in. And that's ISAs for outgoing calls. We have ISAs for incoming calls for- More like a, rece a receptionist kind of a- Yeah, it's just making sure that if our agents don't get a hold of these as they're coming in, we have an ISA that's that's reaching out to them, whether it's, I know it says incoming calls, but what about all those leads that come in and don't have a phone number or email? You need to find them. Exactly. You can find everybody right now. In this day and age, you can find everybody. That's the key. And then outgoing. Right. This is where you hire somebody that that you train. Hopefully the lead coordinator has gotten so well that they can train this one on expires for sale by owners, just listed, just sold, all of the outgoing calls that you want. And then an ISA roaming one is one that goes between both. Sometimes this ISA gets a little behind. This one gets a little behind and they go between both. Right. So they have the skill to do yep. both. That's it. So that's the lead coordinator one. And Pavel, let's go to the marketing one because I think- Let's go to the marketing. We that work very closely with marketing. Yeah, I think they're they're both equal, just depending on- They what are, they are, Tristan. And um, the marketing manager, we have a marketing manager, Sarah, and uh, she's, uh, you know, she's pretty much in charge of what's what, what you are outlined right there. We have an ads manager, we have graphic designer, uh, we have a newsletter manager. Uh, we also have social media manager. We also have uh, email, uh, um, you know, email marketing person that she's she's in charge of writing the email specific language you want it to be included. Uh, not just, you know, we, 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 we try to make our emails stand out and. Uh... And they do, they yeah. do very good. So, so I get to work very yeah. closely with Pavel's team on the marketing side. Mm -hmm. And they do have a marketing manager. Here, let me go and break this down so I can show you what it would look like. Initially, the marketing manager that you bring in is going to be in charge of everything marketing, whatever that looks like for your business. For ours, it looks like creating graphics, mm -hmm. creating some of the content, making sure that the social media outlets are functioning correctly for our brands, right? The funnels are sure working, yep. The funnels mm -hmm. are working. And if, and if you're in real estate, then making sure that the flyers are right, that everything is being printed correctly, the newsletter, it's, it's everything when it comes down to this one person. The thing is though, as you start growing, and let's say this is the vertical you do wanna grow, 
you start bringing in, well, let's see, who do we want to bring in next since the world we revolve around is I'd say social, social media. media manager. That would be the one. Exactly, dude. I agree yeah. with you on that. And yeah. for a social media manager, they're going to be in charge of where your business gravitates to, whether that's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, yeah. wherever, TikTok. Look, uh, with Pavel, we he's have got TikTok one person that handles all of the TikTok that he just brought in, yeah. right? Which we do we do have a specific person only for TikTok. We have a person who's handling LinkedIn. Um, we uh, social we also you know person who's handling to one uh, also Facebook and Instagram. But we did hire a person for TikTok. She's she grew her account. She's got I mean her own personal account. Doing has a lot of uh, following and uh, engagement. So we figured that's the person we want to have on our team. So we brought her on, and she's doing a good job. Yeah, and I think, I think that's important, man. People yeah. are always asking, well, what's next? I had a question from the Facebook audience. Patricia, what's up, Patricia? What's so up? I, think, I think she just became a Virtue Desk client like last week or two oh, weeks ago. Nice. Um, Patricia's asking, what do you use to find phone numbers and emails for people? Pavel, do you have an answer for that? I do, but I want you to go first. Uh, as far as like emails and phone numbers, um, you start with LinkedIn. We, we start with LinkedIn because, you know, sometimes they put their uh, business emails there mm -hmm. and we can get them. Also, uh, Facebook, uh, you look them up on Facebook. Yeah. A lot of times those people have their phone numbers there as well. Very true. Very yeah. true. So you, you try to exhaust all of the free places first, yeah. right? Because you don't want to pay. And then you can start looking at companies like Spokio, right? That one's an easy one. S-P-O. K-E-O, Spokio. Mm -hmm. And then you can look into, if you're in real estate, look at companies like Red X, right? Red X does a very good job of, of giving they you do. Yeah. information. So things like that. And then, so let's go deeper on this because I think this is where, uh, this is where I get excited, Pablo, because now that I have a team that I'm building out on this side, I'm like, damn, this is powerful, right? It's powerhouse, totally, dude, yeah. So then you have a content creator. And I think that's where for you, Aubrey does a very good job on content Audrey. creation. Sorry, sorry. There, there you go, Audrey. Yeah, Man, I get it. She does. So many yeah. Aubrey's Audrey's. There you go. I know. No, she, he's amazing. She's doing a good job on content. She's writing. Um, you know, she's basically creating the content. She's writing out emails and emails that we want our brand to be the way we want our brand to be represented. Mm -hmm. So we specifically hire the person to do that and to have that tone in the emails. Because people read that. That's how people in uh, in the in this world right now judge you. They judge you by the way you present yourself on social media. They judge you by the way you actually write your emails. If your email is written half-assed and has like grammar spelling mistakes or just boring, plain just boring, it's gonna stand out and it's gonna go to the trash. Once it go to the goes to the trash, most likely people will just unsubscribe or just you know default it to spam. So. If your engage, if your emails are engaging and interesting to read, um, <clears throat> you wanna you wanna have the person specific person assigned to do that. Yeah. I don't know about you, Tristan, but I'm subscribed to. I like reading in the morning. Uh, the morning brew. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I read morning brew every morning. It's a business. Uh, the newsletter. It's free, uh, and uh, I get it like every morning in my uh, inbox. But it's very engaging. It's like not a single time I miss that because it's very engaging and it's very short because people don't want to, you know, waste a lot of time on reading something. So it's like a five minute read, but it's very engaging. And we try to make our emails, what we, the ones we send out, like Morning Brew, like engaging and interesting. Yeah. So people that's... can read through them. Yeah. I want to talk about the dynamic though of how you you have two different teams, one mm -hmm. that's in house and one that's virtual, right? Correct. Yeah. So and they work together really well because look, the content creator, right, which is in house, mm -hmm. she's extremely mm -hmm. talented. Yeah. She works with the graphic designer, who is a virtual assistant, right? Virtual staff member. Yep. And between both of them, they create the most amazing looking content. And that's well, yeah. the thing. That's the same across everywhere because I know over if you go over to the lead coordinating side, you have James and then you also have Fatima, right? So exactly, it's a good mix. And I, I think people, 
people forget that on a virtual staff, you can have it mixed, you can have it just virtual, you can have it all in-house, but I think ideally what it looks like for best results hybrid, is a mix. Yeah. Yep, I yeah. agree. And that's what we do, we do hybrid. And it's um, a lot of time I talk to agents that say, oh, you know, I need to, you know, go with a VA. And then once they, you know, get some money in the door, say, well, now I need to hire somebody local. I say, great, hire somebody local. They say, well, then I need to get rid of the VA that I love. I said, no, you don't have to get rid of the VA that, that, that you love. You can have both because that's how you grow. You, you grow when you actually add, not where you, where you cut. If, if you cut somewhere to add somewhere else, it's not growth. It's basically, uh, you know, being stagnant. So if you're growing, that's that's what you do. You add people to your team. And uh, in this world, especially post-COVID world, we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of in-house and virtual uh, staff working hand in hand and yeah. having this synergy. So um, we, that's very true, man. That's yeah, very true. I think we've, I mean, we, we have the Zoom meetings like all over. We have a couple of Zoom accounts because people are yeah. working uh all the time, our in-house staff, anytime I come to the office, all the in-house staff, they have meetings with uh, virtual staff. It's like working somebody in the, it would be in the office, you know. Very true, man. And I think yeah. next, next week we have the Leverage Mastermind, right? You and I. Oh, yeah. Tom Ferry, John Key, Lorraine, Kevin, and June, and a few other awesome people are going to be on here. But I think by then, I think what I want us to do is maybe break this down a little further because what people always ask is, well, let's just dig into here. I'll show you. Let's dig into this section. Looks like Mickey Mouse now that I just digged into it. <laughs> it kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse, yeah. So when we go into video editor, <laughs> we have this. But what I want to do is kind of outline the steps. Like these are the tasks and duties that you should have. So let me see if I can do that for some of these, because I think people always ask us like, well, what are those duties, right? Or what are yeah, the go for it, bro. So let's, let's do that. And if you haven't signed up yet, it's free. Uh, we, we put up the link, it's inside of the Leverage community. If you're on the webinar side of this, uh, I'll get it for you, I'll drop it into the chat. So you can jump in next Wednesday to do that. Uh, Thursday, well, it's, the, it's on, no, Wednesday, yeah, 24th. Wednesday. Yeah, show up. Course. Don't week forget. From, week from today, yeah. Well, we're hosting it, dude. Yeah. I, how, dude. How can I? <laughs> there you go, man. And and also here, as we close down, what would you say when we're looking at an executive admin mm -hmm. that we transition over to a director of ops, whether it's in-house or, or virtual? What are the qualities that you're looking for for somebody that's really high level like that? Well, the person needs to have independent thinking. Um, that's number one, what I'm looking at. I'm also looking at when person uh, can give me suggestions and express his or her opinion to me about things that I can, you know, appreciate. Uh, what it tells me if the person is not afraid to step out of the comfort zone and kind of, you know, especially in the Filipino culture, if you're the boss, they probably would not be so keen on to uh, step in and explain their opinions unless they feel very comfortable with you. But once they get to know your company better and um, get to know how you do things, then um, I'm looking for the people who are not afraid to express their opinion. No, no, uh, you know, basically have independent thinking that everything else I can teach. You but know, having, having, having yeah. that, quality is important to me personally what about you man i think i think that might be the same thing on uh, and i think what you what you want to really expand on is that independent thinking because what i find is that they take they take the role they take the position mm -hmm. they take the job and they create it their own right then they start right. adding tasks they start adding things that they should be doing i think that's mm -hmm. That's very key, both in-house and, and virtual, right? Big time, big time, yeah. yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And, and I don't think you can necessarily teach that either. So. That you can't. You can teach technical stuff. You can teach stuff uh, like what's being done in your company. 
as a matter of fact, uh, admin, executive admin can help you put together that organizational chart and outline the tasks that each person, you know, is doing. Uh, for example, Sarah, the marketing manager, she has 12, uh, 12 VAs working with her. <laughs> That's nuts, dude. She has as many VAs as I do. <laughs> yeah, dude, she does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's crazy but uh yeah this is like organizational structures put to places like the christmas tree where you put the uh the christmas uh ornaments on the tree and it becomes very beautiful you know yeah. exactly that's, that's very true you know, but she's got she's a she's unique she's got a you know this thinking going on she's that's very true thinking, you know well and that that's what it comes down to see sarah sarah is one person that you hired in-house right yeah she and did, yeah and then you've been able to use her strengths to be able to build a team around her so exactly yeah i love that all right so where do we go to get a virtual assistant with you uh go to myvirtuedesk.com or send me a dm uh and um you know we'll we'll get you going uh go all to right. virtual desk website it's myvirtuedesk.com or just type in virtual desk in uh, google it'll pop up uh go to the web chat we have a web chat there uh, or, uh, you know, schedule a, a demo call. I love it, man. And then I also put up the link there. So join us next Wednesday. If not, uh, Leverage we'll, mastermind. we'll keep on emailing you anyway. So, oh, well, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pavel. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank Have you, a good everybody. one. Uh -huh.